good afternoon dear students today we will be discussing the block diagram of the coal power plant or the thermal power plant Now basically, the coal is one of the fuel is used to generate the electrical energy. Okay, is one of the non-renewable energy. So basically, we have two types of energies that is renewable and non-renewable. So in a non-renewable, coal will fall into the category of non-renewable resources of energy, which cannot be used again and again. Okay, is the limited fuel which is available in the nature. and that is used to produce what the electrical energy so basically we we'll start the block diagram with the coal storage coal storage then we have the coal handling plant coal handling plant so basically coal is available in two forms that one is live storage and another one is dead storage okay it is available in live storage and another one is the dead storage okay what do you mean by live storage and the dead storage live storage is, is the where the coal is used on the daily basis depending on the power demand or depending on the demand of the consumers whatever we use on the daily basis that is called as the live storage and what do you mean by the dead storage a dead storage is a storage where coal is stored in plenty why uh, the, there may be problems of strikes or there may be some problems of coal mining problems or due to the aging of coal so we have to store the coal for plenty in plenty in one dead storage and use it whenever necessary that is that is nothing but what the coal storage then comes the coal handling plant since the coal is not available in the required forms we have to go for the coal sizers we need to go for the pulverization okay pulverization then we need to remove some uh, quantity of water so we need for the we go for the process of coal dryers so that is coal handling plant preparation of the coal in the suitable form okay and the coal handling plant is fed to the boiler okay the fuel is fed to the whatever the fuel that is there in the required form that is been fed to the boiler okay after the coal is converted in ashes because there is a combustion process going on in the boiler so soon after the combustion process the coal is converted into what into the ashes okay that is given to the ash handling plant okay that is given to ash handling plant you can use a pneumatic system you can use a air pressure system to remove the excess amount of the ash and dump in the deep trenches okay dump into the deep trenches and finally give it to the ash storage you can store in a, a barren lands or you can store in a deep trenches of water sir because ash is uh, what it should it can be reactive in nature so it should be properly handled with the pneumatic system then uh, air kind of system okay so these are the various ash handling procedures now for a boiler basically it is having three types of supply so first one is the supply given air supply is to be given for the proper combustion of the coal then the fuel the coal which we are feeding into the boiler and finally we need to give the water because whatever the water is there that is been converted into the steam okay now now the now the boiler is given to the super heater okay the boiler is given to the super heater okay and the super heater goes to the economizer then this is given to air preheater 
air preheater okay and the air preheater whatever the air that is been supplied it is been given to induced draught fan induced draught fan where artificially the air is been blown okay that amount of air is been supplied to the boiler for proper combustion to takes place okay and finally whatever the flue gases okay the unwanted gases flue gases after doing the useful work it is been passed through a chimney okay this is the chimney which is been there okay explain uh, expelling the unwanted gases and all the flue gases after doing the useful work now we have fed the fuel to the boiler we have fed the air for the proper combustion then we need to supply the water okay that is done by the process of now superheater after getting the steam there is one valve called as steam valve okay which will open and close the valve for the entry or the stop of the steam valve okay then this valve is given to the what you can say the turbine okay this is the steam turbine and the turbine is been coupled to the the turbine is been coupled to the alternator okay the turbine is coupled to the alternator and alternator is been coupled with the exciter okay alternator is been what coupled to the exciter okay now the two components are fed to the boiler now whatever the steam that is been coming to the turbine okay that will be coming as a exhaust steam okay that will be coming to the what to the exhaust steam now this exhaust steam is given to a device called as condenser okay whatever the steam that is been coming it is been given to the condenser it is just like when you boil a water in a vessel after complete boiling water is converted in steam okay and those steam bubbles are sticked to the what to the plate so soon after some 30 minutes or 20 minutes again those bubbles which uh, the steam bubbles are converted what back into the water that is the condensation form of steam converting back into the what water similarly that process is involved in the what condenser after the steam is completely condensed it is been converted into what the water it is been converted into what the water and this water which is coming out from the condenser is very much heated or is a very hot water so i need to cool that water because this amount of water i cannot pass to the what boiler because the boiler may burn so we have a tower called as cooling tower okay which will cool the water and then feed it to the what the to the condenser okay it will feed to the condenser and here is a circulating water pump here is a circulating water pump where the water is in circulated okay now to cool this hot water so i can what i can do is i can naturally make one river okay i can make a natural river over here okay the the water from the river is been pumped to this one whatever the hot water that is been coming from the condenser it is been cooled for the several processes or for the several periods of the cycle okay now whatever the water that is coming from the condenser it is what a very cool water which is removing the all the hot content okay then we have a pump called as feed water pump we have a pump called as feed water pump okay this water whatever the water that is been coming from the feed water it is passed to the economizer okay whatever the water that is been coming to the feed from the feed water pump this goes to the what to the economizer why because to improve the thermal efficiency of the uh, uh, the uh, thermal power plant i am passing to the economizer because during the combustion processes what will happen there will be 
flue gases coming out from the what? From the boiler. Yes. The whatever the flue gases that have been coming, that are being superheated, it will it will heat the flue gases and then it gives to the what? To the economizer. So whatever the water that is uh, passing from the economizer, it will be heated by the flue gases. Means the valuable value of the heat is been saved in the economizer and then fed to the what? To the boiler. Okay. Now, sir, 